Rule number one, never, ever trust anything that the other woman says. Got it. And rule number two, trust your husband until you know otherwise. But how am I supposed to know otherwise? He won't even talk to me. And his lady friend says that this whole thing started because I was never around. Karen, if he was going to be... Fooling around. Right. Right. Your being there wouldn't have stopped it. You know what, you're right. And coming to Port Charles has given me so much already. I mean, you and Lee, and Scott, and Serena. And even talking to Mom, that's been lots of fun. You must be giving her pointers or something. <laughs> no, no, I'm not. Not a, not a one. I think she's just trying very hard not to make any of her old mistakes. You know, sometimes I wish she wouldn't try so hard. Aren't you, um, forgetting someone? Who? Oh. Joe. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, when I saw him again... Wow. Talking about coming home. The person I used to be a long time ago. You know, Karen, people do change, and they grow, and their needs change, too. And, well, your anger at Jagger and his inability to kind of be close to you, those are things that are telling us that you are changing lately. But the problem is you're not doing it together. Do you think that's why I'm drawn to him? Because to Joe, he's available and, and Jagger's not? I don't know. Maybe, maybe it's just because he's so nice. Maybe I have been leading him on. Really, have you? Well, I didn't intend to, but, uh... Well, <clears throat> he, he kissed me. Oh, my. And I finally saw, you know, how much he cares about me and how impossible the situation is, so... I got really self-righteous, and I said some things that really hurt his feelings. But Joe was great. He understood, and he said that we could just be friends. Well, he sounds very considerate. Gail, I am crazy about him. But I love my husband, or the husband I used to have. <sighs> I hate this. What are you going to do? I know what I'm not going to do. I am not going to keep taking advantage of Joe Scanlon. Not until I get everything worked out with Jagger. Maybe this situation calls for a little intervention. Yeah, like what? Like you, her, heart-to-heart -heart talk, the beach, the moon. <laughs> no way. You don't know until you try. Look, Frank, she loves him. She said that. No, but, I mean, isn't it obvious? Whatever this guy does is fine with her. What's that sound like to you? Masochism. True love. You can't mess with that. Yeah, you don't want to. I just hope someday somebody will love me like that. You? Forget about it. So, what brings you to town, Doctor? Convention? Mom! She didn't like the way I sounded on the phone. He's here to kidnap me in case I appear malnourished. <laughs> well, no chance of that with a roommate who shops like Eve. Well, I am on a strict budget for one now. And Julie can obviously afford to do her own shopping. Uh, honey, you better get going if you're going to make that thrilling little baseball game here. Why don't you come along? I got some business I can do. Okay, I'll call you tomorrow. I wouldn't want to blow your cover. It's probably already blown. Oh, hey, don't look at me. I keep my mouth shut. You'll be okay on your own tonight. No, I was being overprotective. I'll call you tomorrow. Okay, I'll be at the Port Charles Hotel. You have fun tonight, okay? I will. Want to walk out with me? Uh, uh, no, I, I want to use the phone before I go. Thank you for coming all this way just to check up on me. Well, I love you, little girl. <laughs> what... A touching reunion. Mine and Julie's, or mine and yours? Okay, Ben. How do you want to play this? Karen, 
I just have one more question I'd like to ask you. You don't have to answer this. You know, just think about it for yourself. But what if Jagger was to come through that door right now and tell you that this Fran person was lying? Would you take him back? Yeah. But only if you were here to stay. And he wanted our life back the way it was. And I wasn't just a pit stop on to another bigger and better case. Because I can't live like that anymore. I can't. Okay. Well, you don't have to. Mm -hmm. Hey. Hey, you have forgotten your fortune cookie. Oh, no. Thank you. I'm stopped. Oh, come on. Come on. It's always good for a laugh. Oh, okay. All, All right. right. Sure, I could use a laugh right now. All right. What does Confucius say? Ooh. <laughs> Let's see. It says, um... To find the love that's missing from your life, look no further... Yeah? What? Who writes this stuff anyway? Oh, my gosh. Oh, <laughs> you. Oh, is that... No, that's yeah. me. I gotta oh, okay. run. Okay. Go ahead, honey. You go. Oh, okay. Don't worry about any of this. I'll clean up. Okay. Thank you again. Oh. Bye. Bye, sweetheart. love that's missing from your life, look no further than your oldest friend. <laughs> well, at least I'm still Karen's oldest friend. I'm not going to mess that up by hitting on her when she's not interested. She means too much to me. Tough guy. Let me go check my messages. I saw the kids in the parking lot. I'm so glad you're still here. I thought maybe you got sucked into that black hole of a hospital across the street. No, nothing like that. Guess what? My dad is in town. That must have been kind of a surprise to you. Yeah. When I decided to come here as Julie Morris, I thought we agreed that I'd visit my parents in Winnetka and they wouldn't come here. And what happened? My mom was worried and my dad, well, he sort of forgot about our agreement. So, when do I meet this guy? I'll set it up. He's only in town a couple of days. He's really great. You'll see. I hope we can handle this in a civilized manner. I find melodramatics excruciatingly dull. Oh, and God knows boring you is the worst sin of all. Are you going to make this difficult? No. I will make this very simple for you. What do you want me to tell my roommate? What does she know? Nothing yet. Well, I don't see any reason why we shouldn't leave it that way. I bet, seeing as she thinks that her father is this devoted husband. I didn't know that you were interning at GH. Luckily, I didn't need your permission. Eve, I can do you a lot of good, or not. And I can blow you out of the water with your little princess anytime I want. I thought we parted friends. You did? Don't you miss me at all? Ben. What happened? The new girlfriend didn't work out either? So sorry. I don't like this new hard edge. It's very unattractive. Oh, no. It's very in your face, and that's what you don't like. On the contrary. I like that very much. Hold it, Ben. Back. Ah. Are you sure that's what you want? You bet. Because for the first time since you've known me, I'm holding all the cards. I'm right on it. Why not? Your ex-mistress is living with your daughter. And there's nothing you can do about it. Thank you for meeting us after hours. Oh, well, you know, I'm a father, so I'd rather play all day, work all night. Is he involved? Uh, Matt Harmon. Dr. Matt Harmon, how are you? Scott Baldwin. All right, good to meet you. Good. Uh, why don't you take a seat? Okay. Uh, I think I know what happened to Greg Cooper. Actually, he has a theory. Well, it's more than anybody else has. Which is? 
Greg Cooper's first seizure was faked, and the second one was self-induced. Okay, well, with his theory, do you uh, know how he managed to do that? Yeah, his lawyer smuggled in a drug, and he injected himself. And you know where Jimmy Hoff is buried, too. <laughs> well, you get Dr. Burgess off, and I'll tell you what really happened on that one. Who benefits? Why did Cooper do this to himself? He's looking at life imprisonment. I mean, maybe he just wants out. Well, then he could just kill himself in prison. Why does he go through all the trouble of getting himself admitted here to the hospital? Okay, that night he took us all hostage. Yeah. He said he wanted to bring us all down with him. And maybe this is his second chance. Well, okay, that's a possibility, but... Uh, so what kind of proof have you got? Come on, let me coach first base. I don't want to be just a cheerleader. I'll think about it. <laughs> hey, Scanlon. Where's the bus? Yeah, relax, Mr. Griffey. It broke down on the way over. The school's sending us another. If we had just driven our cars and the kids straight to the field, none of this would have happened. I said the team would go over together, and that's what we're going to do. They're going nuts out there. They're excited. They want to win. You want to win? Don't replace my kid with that shrimp Ernie. Mr. Griffey, I want all the kids to learn and all the kids to have fun. It's no fun to be a loser. No one is a loser who plays for me, ever. Well, I didn't raise mine to wimp out on the big game. Mr. Griffey, I'm the coach of this team. We do what I say. And I say every kid plays in every game. You'll lose. So what? You know, maybe it's you I don't like. Mr. Griffey, I want these kids to learn teamwork and fair play. And if you interfere with that, I'll be forced to beat the crap out of you. Are you threatening me? Oh, no. I haven't begun. Well, what do you want? To remain silent? Money? I don't want your money. I paid you back for every dress, every book, every nice piece of jewelry you ever gave me. I said you didn't have to. Yeah. But you still cashed a check now, didn't you? <laughs> and you know what? I'm broke. And it was worth every penny. Yeah. Splendor like this must be much more gratifying than the lovely little condo I set you up in. Yes, it is. Because when I crawl into my crummy little bed at night and tuck myself in, there's no one around to make me feel like a whore. I'm sorry you felt that way. I didn't always. If I ever treated you as anything less than a lady, I apologize. I thought you enjoyed being with me. God, you just don't get it. You don't. Get out. Get out! No. Not yet. You're emotionally unstable and you're living with my daughter and I find that completely unacceptable. Don't worry, Ben. I can play nicey-nice with your precious little princess. It's not the first devil and I've had to share a bathroom with. You have changed. You are bitter and you're coarse, and that's your problem. Mm -hmm. It's my daughter that I'm worried about, and I will not let you hurt her. <laughs> what? Me? I'm the one that hurt Julie? Yeah, right. My family is everything to me. The heartbreaking story of a dedicated surgeon and his empty, loveless marriage. Oh, you're a real family man, all right. I felt so sorry for you that I went to bed with you that night. What you and I had has nothing to do with Julie. And you want to keep it that way. That's right. Guess what? You have no power in this part of Oz. So why don't you just leave before I see what a bucket of water will do to that roguing enhanced moose? This isn't over. Don't push too hard, Papa. Or when little princess gets back from her regal night at the recovery room, maybe, just maybe, I'll tell her that Daddy's been sleeping outside the royal bed. 
You're not that cruel. Try me. I guess it was too much to hope that you'd grown up by now. Oh, too bad. Am I still in cradle-robbing range? <laughs>